Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Kraft Heinz sues Aetna. That's right, the Kraft Heinz company, the maker of so many products that we consume on a daily basis here in America, including Heinz ketchup and Kraft salad dressing, along with a gazillion other things, they're suing their health plan administrator, Aetna. So of course, Kraft Heinz is a huge organization, so they're self-funded, and they use Aetna for their ASO services. And Kraft Heinz is saying, look, Aetna spent $1.3 billion of Kraft Heinz's money since 2012, much of which should not have been paid out to doctors and hospitals. They're saying, look, you paid out these claims, you shouldn't have paid them all out. They're saying, look, one, you're not giving us all of our claims data. We are due claims data. You're not giving us all the data. Two, you're doing something called cross-plan offsetting, where you overpaid with our self-funded plan, and then when you recoup the overpayments, you apply those to like your fully insured groups that you're taking risk on. You're not giving the money back to our plan. And then three, they're saying that Aetna is charging them money to reprice out of network claims, then they shouldn't be charging them, or the way that they're charging them is not right. All of this is allegedly, of course, in the suit. Now, the question then becomes, why now? This has been going on for years. It's been going on for over a decade. That is the interesting question that we're going to address today. Why now? And it starts with Amy Ostop, because Ms. Ostop is the head of benefits at Kraft Heinz. And guess what? She has only been the head of benefits at Kraft Heinz for two years, a little over two years. So she hasn't been there that long. Now, before she, now this is not her first rodeo, she's highly experienced. Before she was the head of benefits at Kraft Heinz, she was the head of benefits at Harley Davidson for 16 years. Now, as many of you in the employee benefits world know, Harley Davidson does not mess around. Of course, their entire image is about not messing around. Guess what? They don't mess around with their employee benefits plan. So she comes over to Kraft Heinz and she sees what's going on and she's not messing around. Okay, so that's the first point. Is that there is, and this gets to a previous video that I made. It is a new head of benefits. I have spoken to a very high up powerful benefits consultant who says that one of the largest issues obstructing change for employer sponsored health plans is that the incumbent head of benefits is highly reluctant to change because they have overseen so much malfeasance and historically haven't done anything about it. So if all of a sudden, out of the blue, they want to do something about it, then of course their managers are going to be like, well, that's great that you want to fix it now. What have you been doing for all the previous years? And so it takes a new head of benefits coming in to say, we got problems here. Those problems are not my fault. I'm new. So I'm going to come in and quote unquote clean up this mess. Okay, so that changing of the guard of the head of benefits at an organization is an incredibly important catalyst for change. All right, here's the next important. So we've got multiple needles that we have had to thread here in order for this lawsuit to have happened. Okay, second needle that you have to thread. Who runs Kraft Heinz? Kraft Heinz is not a normal company. Okay, Kraft Heinz is run by 3G Capital. 3G Capital is a private equity firm that is based in Brazil. Now, they only own 15% of Kraft Heinz. In fact, they did a deal where they combined Kraft and Heinz, and Berkshire Hathaway was actually part of that deal. It was a $44 billion deal. It was a huge deal. And that's what 3G Capital does. They run Anheuser-Busch. So they come in, they own a percentage of it. Kraft Heinz is a publicly traded company. You, anybody can buy stock in Kraft Heinz. But 3G owns 15%, and they're like, look, we're going to run this thing. We're not going to be passive investors. We're going to, like, replace the management team. So that's exactly what they did. So guess who runs? So since 3G is a Brazilian company, guess who runs Kraft Heinz? The vast majority of the Kraft Heinz exec team is Brazilian from Brazil, including their head of HR, including their CEO. There's no way that Amy Ostop is like, hey, I want to sue Aetna without the blessing of the head of HR and the CEO. Because obviously, this is a huge deal from a pu publicity standpoint, okay? To a certain extent, it doesn't even matter if Kraft Heinz wins or loses this case. The fact that they even brought this case is a huge 
Like, it's a huge deal. The fact that they even brought this, the fact that they brought publicity to this, there is no way that any head of benefits is going to be able to bring this type of publicity to his or her company without the CEO being on board. And guess what? The CEO is from Brazil. And I know something about companies that are run by foreigners, by non-Americans, okay? We at Compass, we had multiple European-owned companies that had U.S. operations. And I will tell you that foreign owners of U.S. companies have a particular <laughs> hatred for the U.S. healthcare system. They know, they know about the shenanigans. I talked to one head of HR and one head of benefits for a European-owned company that was a customer of ours. I was shocked at how well they understood the U.S. healthcare system. I'm like, I'm gonna educate them on all this crazy stuff. And they're like, oh no, Dr. Bricker, we already know, we get it, right? Like, they were so disgusted with how the US, system, U.S. healthcare system worked that they were like, sick and tired of it and weren't gonna take it anymore. Guess what? The Brazilian executive team at 3G has no, they have no love for the U.S. healthcare system. In fact, they are known for being incredibly decisive and aggressive in their cost-cutting measures. To a certain extent, maybe Kraft Heinz even went out and recruited Amy Ostop to ruffle some feathers and shake things up. Maybe they didn't even need to encourage her to sue Aetna. Uh, maybe, she, maybe they just wanted to do it on their own, okay? So you have this dynamic of a private equity firm that is into cost-cutting that's from a foreign country that has a particular you know, which if they're like the other foreign co companies that I'm familiar with, they have a particular hatred for the U.S. healthcare system. Okay, now, the third piece of the puzzle is the Kraft Heinz stock has been doing horribly, okay? When they, back in 2017, okay, so this the original deal happened in 2015. In 2017, the stock peaked at $98 per share. Okay, here we are in the summer of 2023, the stock is at $35 a share, okay? I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it has been a horrible destruction of shareholder value. And so 3G still has a lot of work to do to turn around this merger through a ton of cost-cutting activities, including much more effective operations of its employee health plan, which is why they're trying to do all this. Okay, now, the final piece of the puzzle that I'm going to add is that, of course, Kraft Heinz is not a part of an organization of American CEOs that is called the Business Roundtable. That's right. The CEOs of many of the largest corporations in America are part of this roundtable organization. Okay, they all work together. I'm not sure I want the CEOs of American corporations working together. Shouldn't they be competing? Isn't it interesting that members of the Business Roundtable include the CEOs of CVS Aetna, the CEO of Elevance, which used to be Aetna, and the CEO of Cigna? Okay, well, if you're the CEO of a company that uses CVS Aetna or Elevance or Cigna as your plan administrator, like, don't you think that before Kraft Heinz was going to sue Aetna, don't you think that maybe the CEO of CVS Aetna might have spoken to the CEO of Kraft Heinz. I'm just guessing that they probably spoke before the lawsuit actually occurred. And something tells me that they didn't know each other. They weren't buddy-buddy with each other. They were not, because Kraft Heinz is not part of the business roundtable. They have no relationship. Why do you think CVS Aetna, Elements, and Signar are on the business roundtable? Because it's important for them to have relationships with the CEOs of these major corporations that are their customers. Customers. So here you have a new head of H new head of benefits with a private equity firm that has foreign and a foreign executive team that has a poorly performing stock that has a CEO that is not buddy buddy in the business roundtable with the CEO of their plan administrator Aetna. You put all that together, and what does that equal? A lawsuit. What does that also equal? That equals an incredibly unique situation that is highly not replicable in America. So I, would, I don't think this is some canary in the coal mine where I know a lot of people are like, oh, this is great, and we're going to have lots of companies suing their, their uh, plan administrators, blah, blah, blah. Like, honestly, this is such a unique setup here that this is not like the majority of corporations in America. It's highly unique. And so as a result, we got a lawsuit. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.